All right, today I'm going to be reviewing this um, Westminster Reference Bible, and this is from the Trinitarian Bible Society. And if you're not familiar with them, they're a uh, King James ministry based out of uh, London, England. And they, you know, produce Bibles in many different languages for distribution all around the world. So a good ministry, if you've never heard of them, check them out. But uh, this is their Westminster and it's also available in hardback, and it's much cheaper. I think it's like $18. This is the um, calf skin. I'm showing you the spine there. It doesn't have raised hubs. It has the tooled hubs. And this is the calf skin, I do believe. And I think this one goes for $80. So a little on the spendy side, but still not, um, you know, Allen-esque prices. But uh, this is a uh, a real sturdy Bible, a real thick piece of leather. But you can see it's a pace down, so not exactly leather lined by any stretch. Um, flexibility is eh, sure it'll break in. I'm sure it'll last a long time. But um, you know, I had got this in a trade. Never saw a Westminster. Want to check it out. So. Uh, you know, I traded for something that I thought was fair. And I like the Bible. I'm going to get into it here. Um, you got this border here on this front page of the card stock. And it's got uh, Psalm 119.18. And the next one is Psalm, 19, Psalm 19, 7 through 11. And there's that. And 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. So that's kind of cool, you know. Something a little different. Little road maps, I guess you would say. Um, presentation page. Simple, but nicely done. The uh, title page. There's their address. Address there in England. And... Gives you a brief description of the different ones that they make. And this one is printed and bound in the Netherlands by Youngblood in, looks like, January 2013. And I got my, I got mixed opinions about Youngblood. I prefer to be bound and printed in the United Kingdom. You know, I, my Ruby Reference Bible is a good example of that. I really like that one. And it's bound in the UK. So, I guess Youngblood is just must be a, uh, Seems to be really in vogue right now with Allen, especially. But uh, you know, you end up with a Young Blood Bible, not an Allen Bible, in my opinion. But uh, I'll, I'll leave that as it. I'll leave that lay. And here's your contents page and the epistle dedicatory. Translators to the reader. That's pretty nice to have that included. And it's got these um, various helpful characteristics of the authorized version. It goes into the use of italic type. Lord versus Lord, God versus God, and different meanings there and where it's used. It talks about the use of capitalization as kind of a, a new thing compared to when the scripture was written, so on and so forth. And... Um, Goes into the thou and ye and really kind of breaks it down. Second person singular, informal, you know, possessive, genitive, objective, nominative. Real good stuff. I mean, if you don't, if you're not really familiar with it, it's a good way to get familiar with it, I guess. So, um, I like that. And it talks about this uh, paragraph marker, but I think pretty much everybody knows what those are. But uh, still nice to no here and let's see the book titles and they drop the title saint in the gospels so there you go chapter summaries i like this um taken from a standard edition of the authorized version printed in 1773 by irie and strahan in london so that's pretty cool I like that. And they talk about the psalm headings or part of scripture. And the reason I like this is because uh, when I'm studying, I like to use a lot of uh, different reference Bibles because 
sometimes they'll take you to parts of scripture that you know never considered before you know and if you're always using the same one you know you're never going to really learn anything different using it so I, I use a bunch of different ones i got some from the 1800s that i use uh, the early 20s 30s different ones helps me uh kind of and there's an example of the uh, page headings chapter summaries such and such and so on and so forth so there's that and a little guide to using the Westminster so chock full of information here at the beginning for sure and then you have the uh, list of the uh, books of the Bible finally the Old Testament and here we go looks to be about an eight point eight and a half maybe that's what I'm going to say anyway I like how the um, references are along the outer edge makes the text a little less cluttered very cleanly executed I have to say I really like it so and what they do here is they give you the updated definition so firmament is sky you know, and they'll have a star beside it there and the Hebrew definition also which uh, you know a little less effort in the studying I suppose and um, just a couple of examples there you know I, I've been using the King James so long I really don't need that but um, I guess it's good for someone who's not familiar with the King James to use it um, here's the Matthew title page uh, a bunch of references there on the side real good stuff and uh, there's the title page to the New Testament like I said cleanly executed um, not very decorative or anything um, but cleanly executed nonetheless and uh, there's your type and to me this Bible will most likely get used as a reference for study I, I doubt that I'll read out of this one very often and the reason I say that is uh, you know if this was the only Bible I had I'd be happy with it but to me the paper is a little too white and I don't know, the type is a little too, runs together a little bit much for me to enjoy reading it. And they're just a little too much ghosting for my liking, you know. And that's only because I've got so many different ones to compare it to and, you know, I know what I like. And this one isn't bad. I'm not trying to talk talk bad about the Bible or anything, but, um, you know, it's, um, it'll, it's laid out really nice but I just prefer it to be a little darker print and the paper to be a little more off-white, I guess, and it'd be a lot easier on my eye. It just seems a little busy on the page, even with the uh, the references on the outside. Just a little close together, not much line leading there. But all in all, a, a real nice, nice Bible. So I, don't, I don't think that you would be, you know, unhappy with it, but uh, I have others that I prefer to read so but I'll definitely be using this one for a reference because I want to check out those uh, references on the scripture here and see where they take me as opposed to uh, some of the more modern stuff and here you got the appendix in the back tables of weights and measures and this is kind of helpful if you don't have a Bible with any of that information in there of course you can look most of this stuff up now if you have a you know a Bible program on your uh, computer or phone I use eSword and I love that thing it really helps me out in my study you know you can just look up a word how many times does this word appear you know or a phrase or something like that but it's kind of it's kind of nice to have this in the back of your Bible easy little reference guide so there that is Old Testament money and Old Testament time so there's that. New Testament money and New Testament weights, lengths, liquid measures. 
And the fur can, of course, is mentioned when uh, in uh, Canaan when Jesus turned the water to wine. So that's kind of an interesting thing to know. Appendix 2, proper names, tells you how to pronounce them. And it starts here. A little pronunciation guide there. And there's that. And that's you know, all the proper names in the Bible. So it's going to be pretty lengthy. And Appendix 3, Daily Reading Plan. And as far as I know, most of the TBS Bibles I've ever owned have this in the back. And it's a two-year reading plan. So if you're you know, really lazy and don't like reading your Bible that much, <laughs> you know, and you want to take two whole years to read it, here's a reading plan for you. I'm just joking, of course. You know, to each his own, if you want to take two years to read it, you know, if you want to do several different reading plans at one time, you know, so it's, it's, um, gives you what you're supposed to read every day to read your Bible for two years. And then the, the back is the concordance. And it's a pretty thick concordance. You know. And let me get to the end of that. I think, I think there's some blank pages. Yeah, there's a bunch of blank pages. So probably 15 or so blank pages. And then you get to the maps. And these look to me to be really 1970-ish or 80s kind of maps. I can't really say for sure, but that's just the impression I got with all the, just the way it looks in general. But, you know, decent. I don't really use maps in the back of my Bible. I got a Bible that I use the maps in because it has the most detail and the rest of them are just kind of, you know, I don't use them that much. But every once in a while you find something useful in them. So there you go. The Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom exiled into Babylon. That's pretty cool. And the dates, of course. And here's something different. The Scythian Empire. You don't really see a lot of Bibles with that in there. So I'm gonna take back what I just said. Um the Scythians, of course, are modern-day Russia. Um, you know, the Persian Empire here became... Um, anyway, I don't want to get into my history lessons. I don't have my notes in front of me. <laughs> but this is a Bible review, not a Bible study, so i got to remember that. Here we go. But um, and here's Paul's missionary journeys all together. And it shows the storm there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So anyway, there's the uh, the end of the contents of the Bible. And you get to the end. It's a pretty, you know, nicely put together Bible. Um, the ribbons have been replaced. So I think it comes with two, I want to say black ones, but don't quote me on that because I don't really know. But, um, you know, all in all, a nice Bible. Um, I think it would be a really good study Bible if you don't have one that you already prefer. Like I said, I use a lot of different study Bibles just as references. Because uh, when I study things, I like to study it out as much as I can. And Every once in a while you find a gem in one of these, you know, where it takes you to a scripture that you hadn't thought of before. And you can see things from a different perspective and it's always nice to have. So uh, anyway, this is my review of the Trinitarian Bible Society Westminster Reference Bible. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching. Maranatha.